Redemption kids. Last week, we discussed the importance of knowing and understanding the scriptures and applying them to our lives. When we receive and understand the word of God, we are then ambassadors to the good news of Jesus, and it's our assignment to share it. Telling a story from scripture is one of the best ways to not only deepen our knowledge of scripture truths, but it's also the easiest way to share with others. But in order to tell a good story, we must put ourselves into the story and allow the truths to take root in our heart. Now, Jesus, he was a master storyteller, and he often taught crowds through parables. A parable is a story that helps people understand something that is otherwise very hard to understand. One of the parables that Jesus told from a boat was a story about a farmer who planted some seeds. Now this week, you'll be reading that story from your Bible as the scripture reading from Mark 4, 1 through 20. But for now, let's overview and explain this scripture passage. In order to grow crops, a farmer or a sower tosses and scatters the seed across the ground. The seeds then land in various places. Now in the parable, the seeds fell on four different places. Some of the seeds fell along a path where they were eaten by birds. Other seeds fell on rocky ground, and those seeds had no roots, so they withered in the sun. More seeds fell among thorns, and they were choked out. Then seeds fell on good soil, and they produced a crop. A hundred, sixty, or thirty times what was planted. Now, if we were to grab our magnifying glasses and our detective hats and dig a little deeper, we would discover that there was more meaning to this story about the sower, some seeds, and the soil. This lesson was about God's word and the response of those who hear it. After Jesus told the parable, he explained to his disciple that the soil represents people's hearts and the seed is the word of God. The person whose heart is like the hard soil Here's the good news about God, but he doesn't understand it, or he rejects it. The person whose heart is like the rocky soil is quick to receive the truth, but when life gets hard, he falls away. But the person whose heart is like the thorny soil cares more about the things of the world than the good news of God, and the seed can't grow. But the person whose heart is like the good soil hears the good news about God and receives it and he bears fruit more than that was planted. In the life of a believer, the fruit of the Spirit is evident. And you can read more about the fruit of the Spirit in Galatians 5, verses 22 and 23. It is important to remember that people respond to the gospel in various ways. Not everyone who hears the gospel believes it, but God calls us to share the gospel with everyone and trust that he is mighty to save. So go out, share, plant your seeds of the good news. God will nurture and grow it. But before I leave you this week, I want to ask one question, and I want you to think about it and ponder on it. What type of soil are you? So let's move on to those challenges. I know I say it every week, but I get really excited about some of the challenges. But this week, I'm super, super excited because you're going to plant the seed but what I'm excited about is that you're going to come and see us, your Redemption Kids ministry leaders. And we are so excited to be able to see your faces. There's a time slot sheet that is posted on the Redemption Parents Facebook page. Just pick a time. We'll be there with the supplies and we're going to help you pot a plant. I've already said that our scripture reading this week is Mark 4, 1 through 20. And of course, you should always stick around for that Jesus Storybook reading. This week, it's by Emily Tennell. This week's creative challenge is Story Ad Libs, and that is a fun worksheet that you print off and you will fill out different parts of speech and then read your story to see what it says. Keep up with those sermon notes journals. We're looking forward to seeing what you all have written down. And don't forget that series challenge with all those books of the Bible that I know you've started memorizing. As always, I love you and I can't wait to see you in person. Bye. This week's 
story is called Treasure Hunt, and it's found on page 250 of the Jesus Storybook Bible. The story of the hidden treasure is from Matthew chapter 13. One day, Jesus was telling people about God's kingdom. God's kingdom is wherever God is king, Jesus told them. It's wherever God is in charge. It's where he fills your heart up with his forever happiness, and you stop running away from him, and you love him. But sometimes people couldn't understand things very well. So Jesus helped them by telling them stories called parables. Jesus said, God's kingdom is like a hidden treasure. And he told them this story. Once upon a time, there was a man working in a field, digging. So there he is digging, but what he doesn't know is that in that field, there is buried treasure. So dig, dig, dig. Clink, clank, clunk. Uh-oh, his shovel bumps into something hard. Hello, what's this? He picks it up, dusts it off. It's a chest. It's rusted and locked, but creak. He pries it open. What he sees inside takes his breath away. Beautiful, glittering, gleaming, twinkling, sparkling, precious jewels. It's a treasure chest. He wants that treasure. He needs to get that treasure. He must have that treasure somehow, even if he has to sell everything he has so he can pay for it. He quickly buries the treasure again, runs home, and sells everything he has. He takes the money from the sale and goes and buys that field. Now he owns the field and the treasure that is buried in it. He runs back and digs up the treasure again. Jesus said, coming home to God is as wonderful as finding treasure. You might have to dig before you find it. You might have to look before you see it. You might have to give up everything you have to get it. But being where God is, being in his kingdom, that's more important than anything else in the world. It's worth anything you have to give up, Jesus told them, because God is the real treasure. God had a treasure too, of course, a treasure that was lost long, long ago. What was God's treasure? His most important thing, the thing God loved best in all the world. God's treasure was his children. It was why Jesus had to come to the world to find God's treasure and to pay the price to win them back. And Jesus would do it, even if it cost him everything he had.